Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Board Administrator. County Board Administrator. County Administrator. And beside me is the County Board Chairman, Roger Distruti. You know, I think we've done this program now a hundred times, and that's the first time I mixed up my title. Yeah, well, now you're administrating us as a board. Then, yes, yes. Uh, I know who I work for. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different department, a different department head to join us as a guest and talk a little bit about their roles and responsibilities. And right now we're in the midst of the most important policy document that the county board ultimately adopts, and that is the budget process. And with us today is Mr. Terry Hansen, our finance and IT director. Welcome, Terry. Thank you, Adam. It's great to be here. Terry's been with us now since 2010, so the honeymoon period is over, and he's put together collaboratively, along with Chairman Distruti and myself, a few budgets now, and uh, continues to do good work for us. And Terry, why don't you begin by sharing a little bit about yourself and your, your background? Well, I've been in the accounting profession, government accounting profession, ever since I left college and started off as an auditor and worked my way through various state agencies and quasi-state agencies, worked for local government as a finance director, and then moved to Sheboygan as a finance director for the city of Sheboygan. And from there, the opportunity came to work for the county, and I, I took, took the chance and jumped on that as soon as I could, and it's been great ever since. I understand that now that you've been working for the county, you've never been happier. Is that true? You've never been happier in my professional career. <laughs> well, it's good to have you aboard. It's, it's amazing how quickly the time's flown the last few years. And when you started, because of your strong skill set and particularly some background with technology, uh, as you know, we consolidated our finance department with our what was our IS department into the finance and IT department and uh, you've done an excellent job as department head over those areas. What are the roles and responsibilities of the finance and IT areas? Well on the finance side we handle everything that is financial essentially from accounts payable, accounts receivable, purchasing, the general accounting for preparation of the financial statements, working with the auditors for the financial audit, the budget process, and also the financial analysis and guidance given to you and the county board is another big piece that, that we do as well too. And then we also process all of payroll. On the IT side, we manage all of the um, computers, mobile devices, and then all the information systems that go into making sure everybody can do their, their daily operations. If it's from the CAD RMS dispatching software that the sheriff's department uses, to the software that Health and Human Services utilizes to track all of their, their clients and all their information. We manage all of that and make sure that it's up and running. And then we also get involved in the project management aspect of it. We help those departments understand their business needs, translate that into the technology side and make sure that that can be implemented and solve those problems that departments may be having so that they can be doing their job more efficiently. And on the IT side or the, of the house, that IT division, you really helped initiate a hybrid situation for Sheboygan County that's contributed to not only improved service, but substantial savings. Please touch on that. Yes, uh, one of the, we were approached by an outside vendor, Datamax IT Services, located here in Sheboygan. And they came and were looking to help the county in our transition period. And what we came up with was we have management and then more of the um, higher technology skill sets that we need as staff in the IT division. And then on the daily interactions that most of the county employees have are with the Datamax employees that do a lot of the troubleshooting, installing systems, and making sure everything's running smoothly. And that has worked out immensely. Right now, we have been saving over $250,000 a year by implementing this. And this is a model that is now being implemented in other counties as well. I know Ozaki County has implemented the model, and I believe that there's a couple others that are looking at it. And I think the Random Lake School District is also looking at this model. Yes, they are. And again, it's just tried something different, hybrid with both county and private sector staff working side by each. And as you said, we raised the bar. We have stronger skill set, less cost, and better service. So it's, it's been a real winner for us. Well, back to the budget process. Um, it's almost an annual process, as you know, though it really gets 
going in uh, June, July, and then through the fall months with the county board's oversight and review. Give us a snapshot of the budget process as a whole. How, how is it put together? Well, the, the process starts with some initial projections that you start requesting typically in January. So start working on those and providing that information to the Finance Committee and the County Board, just making sure everybody's aware of it and also sharing that information with the department heads as well. And then as we get a little bit more solid numbers based upon what the state may be doing with their budget process, we start firming that up more in April. Um, the Finance Committee and the Executive Committee decide upon some objectives for the overall uh, budget upcoming and then that gets rolled out at the leadership forum with the county board as a whole and then uh, towards the end of that month in June we have the budget kickoff with all of the department heads laying out all the targets that are set for each department and what we're looking at doing and then July and August and they go through an administrative review, they get reviewed by their liaison committees, and then subsequently reviewed by the Finance Committee. Everything gets wrapped up and presented to the County Board in October and the final adoption of the budget in November. And this is the fourth budget process now that you've been a part of and, and certainly puts your fingerprints on. Um, how, it, how does it differ? How does the Sheboygan County's budget process differ from other budget processes you've been a part of in the past. I know you've worked for both the city of Sheboygan and you also were working for a unit of government in Minnesota. Yes, this process by far is the most comprehensive budget process that I've been involved with. It's the most formal. It is very professional and streamlined. Um, we're always looking at ways to improve each year to make it a little bit easier. But by far, this is the most structured. It starts the earliest and is the most comprehensive and thorough. It gets the most review out of any of the budget processes I've been involved in. So there's a lot of people who get to look at it from with many different angles, make sure that we're covering everything that we should and making sure that we are putting the money and the resources in the right direction that the county wants to move in from a strategic point of view. It's good to hear you say that. It was good to hear Chairman uh, Finance Committee Chairman Bill Guerin mentioned last year that one of his criticisms of the budget process was it almost went too smooth last year. And that's the kind of criticism that Chairman Roger Distrudy and I like to hear from, from board members. But it really has been an effective process and one that I'm particularly proud of because it's very collaborative. Uh, in the end, everyone's had an opportunity for input and everyone's had ownership and, and uh, it's, it's, it's led to some pretty positive results. In fact, when you look at the results of our budget process, what's been the general trends there? What if, what if, you know, what can you share with our viewers? Um, from out of the last six budget processes that we've had, four of them have resulted in tax levy decreases. So very good on holding the bottom line and making sure that we're being fiscally conservative, especially in the tough economic times that the county has faced. And we've always looked at streamlining those processes through this budget process, making sure that we're doing things as efficiently and effectively as possible, especially you highlighted the, the consolidation of the finance and I, IT divisions together. That was a, a good savings for the county. And we've also had other departments that have gone through consolidations, which through this budget process, a lot of those have fostered up and, and have been great savings for the county. In fact, our payroll today is less than it was over a decade ago, so there really has been a lot of streamlining and consolidating. Um, before I turn it over to Roger, some folks may wonder, well, what's the role of the county administrator in the budget process versus the department heads versus the liaison committees? And then, of course, you have the full board that ultimately approves the final budget, but what are, what are the roles of these different folks? Okay, well, the county administrator is responsible for submitting the budget to the county board. And the county administrator lays down the groundwork, works with the executive and the finance committees to set the budget goals and the budget targets. And then once those budget goals and targets are set, the county administrator establishes the levy targets for each department, and the departments work with their respective department staff to develop a budget that falls in line with those targets. Those tar once that budget is, meets those targets, it's presented to the county administrator for review with the finance director, and that has gone through. If there, if there are any revisions, it'll 
keep going through that process until everything is fine with that budget. But it, once that it clears that administrative review, then the liaison committee reviews the budget and has any input for the department from that standpoint. And once that gets approved, then the finance committee gets to review those departmental budgets. And then once the finance department is finalized with reviewing all of them, then the full budget is submitted to the county board for their review in October. And then it's open for a public hearing for the public to have input and then finally for adoption. And just on a personal note, I've been the county administrator now for 15 years, and our process, though we've tried to tweak it and improve it every year, I, I really think the key to our success has been the collaboration. Um, a number of my peers will introduce budgets in other counties, and then the county board chair may introduce a different budget, or the finance committee may introduce a different budget, or maybe the county executive, which is similar to my position, but elected. And then at the end, you have all this hand wrangling and uh, different ownership for different budgets and it can get rather ugly in the end, certainly contentious. Uh, versus in Sheboygan what we've done is, you know, through the good work of the finance department, we, we pull our budget assumptions together. Between Terry and I, we really try to come up with a reasonable goal and targets, but instead of just rolling that out, then we meet obviously with Chairman Testrudi and the Executive Committee and the Finance Committee and now the HR committee, we try to involve as many uh, policy making committees involved with that budget process early on so they agree, agree with our budget assumptions, agree with the goal that we've established. And once they've given their nod of agreement, then we meet with the full county board during our leadership forum. And we've been doing that now for a good dozen years. And when the full board at the leadership forum sees the goal and targets uh, through consensus, if they're supportive of that, then Terry and I know as we work with the department heads from that point on, uh, we are striving to position the county board to achieve its goal. And that goal for a number of years has either been to hold the line or reduce property taxes. And again, under Roger Distruti's leadership with the county board, we've had just a real successful couple of years. And in fact, uh, Roger's been on the finance committee and executive committee. We've had a successful track record for some time now. So it's been a good process. Uh, Roger. I'll turn it over to you to get into uh, equalized value a little bit because I know many of our viewers may wonder how does equalized value come into play and what is equalized value? Yes, uh, first I'd like to say it's been a pleasure to work with you, Terry, and uh, as finance committee chair and as uh, county board chair and as Adam mentioned, we've really uh, come together and try to include everyone, all the committee's input and after each budget year we uh, self-analyze what we did right and what we did wrong and I think that's helped us improve every year and it's, uh, it's a great testament to both of you fellas. Uh, equalized, uh, we've had Sheboygan County in the last number of years has always had a 5% value increase in our valuation but the last four years uh, the property values have decreased. It's not just our area throughout the state and the country but uh, how does the equalized value decrease this year affect our taxes and how does more more importantly how does it affect the property tax okay um, our total equalized value decreased 132 million dollars last year that's a 1.5 percent decrease in in equalized value um, what that means essentially is if the property taxes stayed exactly the same. The amount of money that is needed to run county operations, our tax rate would increase by nine cents. So even though our spending would be exactly the same, the tax rate that people would pay would be higher. This comes in and gets confusing with everybody is dependent upon what happens with their neighbor, they may or may not be spending or paying more in taxes than they would the prior year. If their values go up, then they would be paying more taxes than they would the prior year. If their values stayed the same and everybody else's stayed the same, they would be paying the same amount of taxes. But if their property values went down, and particularly more than what the, that decrease was of the 1%, per, 1% 
then they would be paying less taxes. So it can be very confusing because it, you can't look at it from an isolated incident. You have to look at what's happening throughout the whole county as a whole. So it gets very confusing, but I invite anybody who has any questions about that to contact me and I'd be happy to walk them through it. But the, the main thing is, as the equalized value goes down, our tax rate goes up, even if we aren't increasing any taxes. And equalized values, to make sure everyone's clear, that's the combination of all property values throughout Sheboygan County, whether it's your own private residence or a business, all of the above. That is correct. And, and what further confuses it sometimes is we have a large county, a lot of different types of properties, and not everyone's property goes up or down the same as different properties, a lakefront property or farmland or a residential and even different types of residential move up or down. So, so we're, we look at the entire county's value, but yours may be a little different than another township or cities. That, that's hard to compare, but we're looking at the total for the entire county. Yes, we're looking at it in aggregate. Mm -hmm. uh, and it explained property tax levy limits and uh, and uh, the factor for the 2014 budget, uh, what's the difference between the state levy limits and our own self-imposed goals? Well, the, the state tax levy limits um, limit the amount that the county can increase in their actual property taxes. So right now it is limited to 0% or their net new construction, whichever is greater. And right now the county's net new construction for 2014 tax year is 0.85%. So we could increase our tax levy by 0.85%, which equates to about $320,000 for the county. So the state's putting a restriction on the amount of money that the county can generate in addition to what they taxed last year. So if we taxed 45 million last year, we can only uh, tax 45 million, 320,000 this year. And that restriction does not look at any other factors that the county may be experiencing. It is only looking at net new construction. And net new construction is the new value that has been added to the county's tax base. So if a new building gets built, if a new shopping mall gets built, they're, they're saying you can levy additional taxes due to this new construction but you can't levy additional taxes if somebody's property value increased 50%. So they're just looking at the new taxable properties that are being constructed in the, in the county. And what is the county's current property tax levy and how has it changed in the last few years, uh, for instance, since uh, 2007, I believe you have? Our, our current tax levy is $45,610,000 and with a tax rate of $4.51. And over the last few years, you can see that the taxes, starting in 2007, we had a decrease in 2008, a decrease in 2009, another decrease in 2010, an increase in 2011, but followed with a decrease in 2012 and a slight increase in 2013. So out of the last six years, we've had four tax levy decreases. And that's not just a tax rate, that is the actual amount of taxes that the county is collecting. And so we have reduced our taxes four out of the last six years, which is a very impressive track record. And based on our research, we're the only county to have done so in the last six years. And there's, there's been a lot of talk about the state budget uh, this, this year and how does the state budget impact our, our county uh, taxes and our operations? The, since the county operates essentially as an arm of the state, we're very impacted by what the state does in their budget process. And it can be something that doesn't catch any headlines, but all of a sudden it may impact a department by $50,000 based upon what may happen. So even though you may not hear anything on the statewide news or local news, there, we are very sensitive to what the state does. In addition, they also may impose unfunded mandates which require us to do additional work or do additional tracking but do not provide any ability to fund those operations so the county is left trying to find ways in their current funding to cover these additional 
activities that we have to do. So based upon what the state does, the counties are very sensitive and it impacts us on a budgetary basis more than many people may think. And um, it especially, and the biggest one that we have to be concerned with is the tax levy, of course, because even though that's tied to net new construction, it does not allow a county to absorb any increases for inflation or rising costs. And the state is one of those agency, or the state passes on a lot of fees to the county that are higher than inflationary costs as well too. So we have to absorb those increases through what the state adopts in their budget as well. So we have a lot of, a lot of sensitivity to what the state does in their budget practices. Well, thank you, Terry, for all the work you do. And I'll turn it back to Adam. For years, we've been absorbing reductions from the state. And for years, we've had more mandates or requirements placed on us that weren't funded by the state. It's, it's been really a broken record. And again, fortunately, we have a team in place in Sheboygan County between the county board and our department heads and our excellent staff where we've been able to streamline, consolidate, gain efficiencies. I mean, at one point we had three owned and operated nursing homes in this county and now we have one, Rocky Knoll. So there's been a lot that's been done. Uh, I know we've, the three of us have certainly discussed this before, but personally, I think we're we're getting to a point where though there's always room for improvement and it goes without saying that we're going to continue to try to strive to gain efficiencies and work smarter uh, with net new construction with that statutory limit of net new construction let's put that in perspective a little bit you know this year last year it's gone up less than one percent that provides about three hundred thousand dollars of additional revenue for us to work with but as you know, Terry, every year we start a budget process looking at our revenue and our expenditures, anticipated increases for fuel, utilities, feeding prisoners at our correctional facility, maintaining programs at Health and Human Services and the increased demand, and of course, wage and benefits. And health insurance has continued to be a real expensive area for us. How does net new construction and that limit how does that relate to these other increases, if at all? It, it has no relation to the actual increases that we're facing, and it is completely based upon what is new being built in the county, whereas those other inflationary costs are directly inflationary. In order to make sure employees have at least the same of what they would last year, we have to follow the CPI, the consumer price index that we usually base everything off of. And we're looking at about 2% for that just for the year, for this upcoming year. And 0.85, there's a gap between 0.85% and 2%. So we have to find a way to cover that. And like you said, through the years, the county has been very good at finding new efficiencies, streamlining, um, and finding areas to fund that. But there will come a time when that'll become harder and harder to do. Same with the inflationary cost for utilities and whatnot. We have found ways to be more efficient in our use of our utilities, but it's just a matter of time before you're as efficient as possible. And then you have to absorb those inflationary costs of three to 5% for your utilities. So that 0.85, while it, we have been able to balance our budget the last few years, it'll become increasingly more difficult to do so with the net new construction being below 1%. And to put it in perspective, if we're looking at a 2% uh, salary increase for all employees, wage increase for all employees uh, following CPI and health insurance increases in that four, five, six percent range, uh, if memory serves, that's about a $1.7, $2 million hit just for wage and benefits. Is that correct? And that is correct. So it really gives I hope it gives you an appreciation that those statutory caps may sound wonderful and, and politically may be appealing. Oh, we're going to hold the line and, and, and put our heel on the necks of county board supervisors or local government. Uh, the bottom line is net new construction has absolutely no relationship to the programs and services that the county board is required to provide. And so it, it, it's creating, I think, uh, a situation where 
uh, the board is really going to have some tough decisions ahead of them about whether or not we can truly eliminate programs and services, though we can eliminate the mandates, or what al alternative revenue streams we're going to look at. But in the meantime, fortunately, we've been able to streamline, consolidate, and continue to, to hold our own. In fact, as Roger mentioned earlier, the county board really has an excellent track record of of uh, putting their own self-imposed limitation or goal in place to hold the line or reduce property taxes. So we've, we've led the way prior to the state caps even getting in place. Uh, last night the county board, and this will be shown a few weeks later, but last night the county board had a big decision with a five-year capital plan. And just touch on that five-year capital planning process and, and how that relates to the overall budget process. Yes, the, for the, our larger capital projects, we have a separate budget track essentially to fund these larger projects. And in May, we send out information to all of the departments, having them submit their larger projects. And our capital projects are anything over $250,000 or over $100,000. And what we're looking for are, is ways to fund it. And typically, we fund most of these by issuing bonds for it, so borrowing money to, to fund these projects because they have a longer life than just an immediate one year. It's typically the life of the bond, at least a 10-year life. So as we submit these projects, they come through to the county administrator and also to the liaison committee and then to the finance committee for review. And once the finance committee approves an initial plan, it gets submitted to the executive committee and then the executive committee then forwards that on to the county board for a final vote. And last night, uh, there was many projects on there. Um, we had a, a total of $14 million that we're looking at bonding for above our own $4 million per year imposed cap that we imposed. But it has uh, some very large projects that are key to providing a lot of public safety to the community. One is the combined dispatch center. Um, rolling in the, the city's operations into the counties, and then also replacing the radio to, um, towers that are used to communicate and dispatch all of the emergency personnel throughout the county. And we're facing an end of life cycle for our current towers, and that project in of itself is around $9 million. So, or at least the infrastructure on the towers. Correct. Like the towers we're not even talking okay, about the radios. But, but the infrastructure, right? Yeah. And, and then we also, the big key to this is we also have a health and human services addition that was funded, but that was funded through fund balance. Software that they're imposing, that is also through fund balance. And then some other miners. But the big thing is that we're continuing to reinvest in our infrastructure and our roads and bridges, which is key to any county and we were able to maintain our um, predicted path to make sure that we're replacing at a, at a good rate. And you had a big hand in pulling that together for us, and we appreciate the work you and your staff have done. Terry Hansen, Finance and IT Director, if you have any questions about anything he's shared this morning or that you're going to see uh, in, the, in the comfort of your homes, don't hesitate to contact Terry or Chairman Testruti or myself certainly would welcome your questions and your input and that's a big part of the budget process so the board is is starting to get to the final stages of it we're feeling good about the the 2014 budget development process but your input your ideas are very important to us and as you know or i hope you know all of the committee meetings are open to the public all of the agendas are posted on our website and we welcome your input and participation. All of the county board supervisors' names as well as department heads are listed on the website, our county website. So if you want to contact your county representative, please do so. But don't hesitate to get involved with your county organization and a budget that in the end is a, about a $130 million operating budget with a lot of projects. So uh, we welcome that input. So, Hope you got some information and a nice snapshot of the importance of our finance and IT area. Please join us again next month when we'll have our veteran service officer, Charlene Cobb, here to talk about the very important work that the Veteran Service Office does, as well as Veterans Day coming up here in November. So until then, thanks for joining us.